my absolutely beautiful Sagittarius friends and welcome to your horoscope for February of 2022 where Sagittarius this month we do have Mercury coming out of retrograde Venus and Mars traveling together but I want to remind you that February is not the month where we just get this full steam ahead energy not just yet it is a useful month as every day is useful but we really will feel the punch of energy jump when we get into March so I want to tell you that because we are still under some of this review and it won't last forever but I don't want you coming into February being like stormy I'm about to get it and you may but you also have to get this stuff over here still too, okay? <laughs> All right, my beautiful Sagittarius friends, don't forget that we've got the Kickstarter going on until February 9th, so if you can kick in to the Kickstarter to help us keep the crowdfunded academy that we created last year free and on this channel. We bring master teachers from around the world not to just bring you astrological perspectives, but they're bringing you the skill of how to do this particular craft. So if you're interested in learning, you've got a friend, you've got that child in your life who's coming up and is really into the astro metaphysical world, we want to keep this resource here and available for all of us. So kick into the Kickstarter. We've only got until February 9th. All right, Sag, let's get in here and see what is going on. Right at the beginning of the month on the 1st, we have got a new moon happening at 12 degrees of Aquarius. And if you are new to my channel or new to astrology and you're not sure how to find 12 degrees in your chart, click in my description box. I've got a video down below how to find the active transit in your chart so you can see exactly what house this is happening in for you, okay? But we've got a new moon happening at 12 degrees of Aquarius lighting up your third house space. Now the new moon is our chance to plant our seeds of intention, to begin something new, or to give something a fresh energy. But we plant in the soil of magic. The sky is dark at the time so you don't know exactly how this thing is going to manifest out but you say this is what I want this is the direction I want to put my attention into universe this is my specific thing right in the third house it can be about writing that book communications contracts negotiations short distance travel teaching, learning courses, things like that. Anything that has to do in the realm of communication, this new moon is really giving you a boost. Now, because it's in Aquarian energy, there is a social feel to it. So are you going to learn a course? Are you going to support the Kickstarter? Are you going to learn a course online? Are you going to teach a course? Are your children needing to be online? What's the social feature that's available to it? Do you have new information that you've learned that in Aquarian energy, it's given you this understanding that you can reform your long range goals, aspirations and visions for yourself. Whatever it is, this particular moon is in alignment with Saturn squaring Uranus. So there is this energy that at this new moon, you can have whatever you want, but you're going to have to put your back into it to get it. You have to have some determination and some stick to to allow this thing to happen. But the invitation to have it and to have the experience is absolutely there. On the third, we're going to see Mercury come out of retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn. So this is going to be right next door in your second house space. This is about your money your money, how you use it, how you spend it, how you make it, right? Do you have creative talents that you have discovered during this retrograde that you weren't using? Did you put out a job application 100 years ago and you heard back during the Mercury retrograde, right? Do you have values or valuables or possessions that you found out during the retrograde are not as valuable anymore? And as Mercury is coming out of retrograde today, you're prepared to make some decisions about what to do with that. You're prepared to say yes to this job opportunity. You're prepared to say yes to this investment, whatever that looks like. Now, I also would love for you to back up to December 29th. This is when Mercury went into pre-retrograde shadow time, so it started to slow down and get ready for its retrograde, but it was at 24 degrees of Capricorn. So when you go back to December 29th of 2021, what was starting to come to your table? These are the clues, the golden nuggets of what you were working on and what you will answer now that Mercury is out of retrograde, okay? <clears throat> 
On the 14th, we see Mercury now picking up some speed. It's not done with its retrograde cycle, but it is picking up some speed and it comes back into the energy of Aquarius. So this will light up again that third house space for you. Now you had a new moon here, so you planted some seeds of intention to begin something new. Now as Mercury's back here, what decisions are you making? What conversations are you having? Where are you hungry for innovation and knowledge and new ways of looking at things? I want you to go back to January 2nd to January 14th. This is the window that Mercury first entered into Aquarius before it took its retrograde. So did something pop into your life at that time? And now that Mercury is back into this Aquarian energy, now you're carrying it forward. So you see, we have this portion of February where yes, things are coming out of retrograde so we can move forward, but it's still in the degrees of past situations we need to finish first okay on the 16th we're going to have a full moon in the energy of leo at 27 degrees and this lights up your ninth house space publishing marketing broadcasting that youtube channel that podcast higher education learning a different language immigration the law long distance travel faith all of that falls under the ninth house base because it's anything that expands you out. Now with this full moon, it says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted here, Sagittarius, right? Where do you need to communicate? You need to say, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I'm about. This is what interests me. Where can you no longer hold back you know, what you've been thinking, what you've been feeling, what you've been ruminating on, and it's time to speak to that. With the energy in Leo, do you need to say, Mom, Dad, I want to go to Pepperdine. Mom, Dad, I want to go to trade school. I don't want to do this. I want to have this kind of channel. I want to talk about this. What is it that you need to say and get ready to make some decisions on so that this moon can course correct you in your expansive houses, okay? As we get to the 17th, we see Jupiter in a sextile to Uranus. Love this. Probably my favorite aspect besides the Venus and Mars all month long because it's exciting. It's refreshing. There's freedom. There's expansion in this. When you have a sextile, it gives you a pocket of opportunity, but then you are also intelligently taking action on that opportunity. Like, I love that for you. I love that for me. <laughs> right? I've got a Sagittarius daughter. I love that for her. So under this aspect, you're going to see this sextile happening between your fourth house and your sixth house. Okay? So your Pisces and your Tauran energies. So as these two are sextiling, they create an opportunity where Jupiter is expanding home. Or maybe it's encouraging you to leave home in some way, shape, or form. You're like, I want to see if there's more, or I want to add an addition to this house, or what is expanding in the home, family, real estate, property zone, and that is nicely going to interact with the innovation of what's coming to your daily routine, your health, your wellness, from Uranus being in Taurus, maybe even your finances. You know, did you find out that, yes, I really can't afford to renovate the bathroom right now because my taxes were less. You know, what is the daily occurrence that maybe you're able to invest in or take advantage or take a risk with that really will come out with for you pretty well on the other side? On the 18th, we see the sun move into the energy of Pisces, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality over here to your fourth house space, home, family, real estate, property, just on the heels of having, yes, I'm willing to make this investment. Then you've got the sun, Jupiter, and Neptune lighting up this fourth house space. So what needs to be assimilated here? Where do you need creative solutions at home? Where do you need rest? and respite at home. If home hasn't felt like home in a while, you may be triggered during this next um, four weeks until March 20th, until we bring in the springtime, to really get creative with how you're sprucing up, spicing up, and making spiritually fit and safe your space. Now, as we close out the month, just a reminder, on the 24th, Mercury will leave its post-retrograde shadow time. It gets back to 10 degrees of Aquarius, and now we're playing with power. Now this energy is ready to move forward full force. Venus will be coming out of her post-retrograde shadow period as we creep towards March as well. So we really will, in March, feel so much more forward motion and not so much hovering in space 
wondering if what I'm looking at is what I'm really looking at. Do I really think that? Is that really right? There's been plenty of that on the table. So just know after the 24th, you may begin to feel some of that newness of energy creeping into your table, okay? All right, my beautiful friends, kick it into the Kickstarter. Check out your weekly horoscopes every week where I walk you through some of the smaller aspects we don't cover in the monthly. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you, and I'll see you next month. Bye, Sag.